Pac-10. The Gators of Florida are 35 and 2. And now for the Dayton Flyers. Their coach, 34-year-old Archie Miller, who is a point guard at North Carolina State, and a good one. Great three-point shooter. His group tonight on the floor, and they will go deep. Devin Oliver was the regular season's leading scorer, but Jordan Seibert has led him in the tournament. For the 35-2 Gators, who are 18-0 in the Southeastern Conference, they're led in the regular season by Casey Prather, but it's Scotty Robican, who is just under 15 points a game in the three NCAA games they've played so far. 48-year-old Billy Donovan, hard to believe, he's been there 18 years in Gainesville, and for the second consecutive season, he has won the Southeastern Conference Coach of the Year. In every sense of the word, Michael Stewart has officiated five Elite Eights and four Final Fours. Doug Shaw's three Final Fours, a national championship game. Patrick Driscoll, four Elite Eights, three Final Fours. A good crew to officiate what we think will be a good game. You're wondering if nerves are going to play a part. You're one step away from the ultimate goal, getting to North Texas and the Final Four. This Gator team, this is their fourth appearance in Elite Eight. you got Dayton, even though they have seniors, on the biggest stage. But there's a reason why they beat Ohio State, Syracuse, and Stanford. It's time to show up now, gentlemen. I will say this, we expect some good fundamental basketball on the offensive end. Both of these teams move the ball so well. Dayton against Stanford, 19 assists on 28 field goals. Florida against UCLA, 22 assists on 29 field goals. So look for excellent ball movement. This is get on top. Frazier right there. He's the sharpshooter on the quarter inside the first two of the game for the Gators. Looked like he may have gotten away with a double dribble as well. Right now you see Florida with some full court pressure chasing ball handlers down. And the thing about Dayton, everyone on that floor, at least four guys capable of handling the ball against pressure. Seibert. And if you're coach Archie Miller, this is exactly what you wanted to see in breaking that pass. He said he wants three. Three passes once the press is broken. Get the ball side to side and play inside out. Shot clock at four, price for three. Rebound by Kavanaugh, got it away from get doubled inside. Nice decision there by Kavanaugh, not to force the ball back up. Let's get it back out and run some clock. They're gonna be very deliberate in their offense. Cybert into Wilbekin, long two. Rebound by Young. You had a chance to see that Florida defense half-court pressure we talked about in the open. Didn't allow many turns of the corner, if you will. Forced the jump shots with a challenge. Frazier has already scored. Prather gets it down low. Patrick Young working his way for the deuce. The other way quickly. It's Pierre. Kavanaugh into Young. And the first two for the Flyers. Yeah, both of these teams, you look at them on face they're deliberate teams working against half court but they're going to get opportunities to run the floor and both of them will take advantage of it, no question about it and if it's a deliberate game it favors dayton dayton wants to slow you down florida wants to speed you up that's why they're bringing the full court pressure the only thing i would say is that having won 29 games in a row florida has seen everything Robicon three His three-point shooting has been terrific. He is now 7 of 20 in the tournament. The drive by Oliver. Snaps it out. Cyber with a three. Only two passes. And that's one thing Archie Miller wanted to guard against. No quick threes versus the press. Well, the pressure is lulling them into 
false security. When they look at this press, they see open shots. Right. But those aren't the best shots that they can get, but playing right in the Florida's hand. Nice screen right there by Young. The slashing Frather. You get open for the triple. Rebound by Oliver. He'll come the other way. A lot of ball handlers on this Dayton team, like Pierre. What a move in the open court there by Pierre. Just really throws Prather. And I've mentioned it before. This is not going to be a deliberate game unless they have to play half court. Whoever gets the opportunity, advantage, break situations, they're going to take it. Prather lost the ball. Retrieves it inside. A lot of congestion. Dayton will get the ball in the swerving Deshaun Pierre out of Whitby, Ontario. And we talked about Dayton and wanting to play deliberate, but you've got to take the opportunities once they present itself in the open court. Pierre with the nice move and the nice finish. A couple of substitutions here for the Florida Gators. Dorian Finney-Smith has checked in for the first time. Also coming in, Lenny. Chris Walker, who is a freshman. Yeah, Chris Walker came in, gave some pretty good minutes in the last game against UCLA. Flyers have won seven of eight in 13 of 15 games. We've talked about who they've beaten. Major programs from top to bottom. Inside, it is Oliver. The corkscrew move on Prather. Rebound by Casey Prather inside. Oh, Oliver got exactly what he wanted to get back to that right shoulder using that left hand. Well, that's a tough shot to miss, though. You get in position. Yes. Good opportunity. Four minutes gone. Here's Frazier outside, and Price is on him. Nice look. Nice pass. Nice block. Little more than four minutes in to the South Regional Final. Number one seed Florida. Number 11 seed Dayton from Memphis on TBS. Social Arena in March Madness Live. Well, Lenny, we've got uh, a change early in the game that has kind of caught your eye for the Gators. Yeah, Patrick Young, who had admittedly some problems getting in the fl flow and rhythm of the game against UCLA is on the bench. Chris Walker is taking his place. Chris Walker had seven points in six minutes during his time against UCLA. So maybe Billy Donovan thinks that Walker would be much more effective against Kavanaugh down low than in the defense overall. V. Sanford just off the bench for the Dayton Flyers hits. Also coming off freshman Kendall Pollard for the Flyers. And you got to be adept if you're Dayton and shooting a mid-range shot. Florida rarely lets you turn the corner and get into the teeth of the defense. Scoochie yeah, Smith has already come in, too, now for Dayton. So three changes for the Flyers out of that break. Prather going inside. Kavanaugh with the dive and the save. That's what I like to see. The big guy getting on the knees, picking up the basketball. Pierre, three. Kavanaugh lassos the rebound. Snaps it outside. Sanford. Kavanaugh already with two offensive rebounds, which has led to pretty good offensive production for the Flyers. Looked like Wilbekin reaching in when he picked up the foul. Nope, make it Prather, number one for Florida. Well, it all began with the turnover on the other end. And once again, Dayton in their flow, in their transition, good ball movement, good movement without the ball allows them the offensive rebounds. Sanford at the line. He's the transfer from Georgetown, a senior from Lexington, Kentucky. Well, here comes Young back in the game for Florida. They bring him in along with Frazier back in the contest. Prather, Walker, and Wilbekin all will take a seat. It looks like both Coach Donovan and Coach Miller are going to keep fresh bodies. They understand this is going to be a high-pace, high intensity type game. You want to have fresh bodies on the floor at all times. And equally important, Patrick Young comes back in, you know, as Robinson for Dayton comes back in. So mm -hmm. it's also going to be a game of matchups. I don't think... Billy Donovan wants the matchup with Patrick Young on Kavanaugh. Here's Casey Hill. He's in the contest now, running the point, taking the place of Wilbekin. He had 10 assists against UCLA the other night. Devon Walker is the other Gator off the bench moments ago. Shot clock is at 9. Finney Smith, the spinning hill. 
and a foul. Looked like maybe the freshman Kendall Pollard out of Chicago was reaching in and picked it up for the Flyers with 14.24 to go in the first half. Indeed, Pollard picked up the foul. Something to watch as this game goes on, the way Pollard closed out to Finney Smith, that was something that Coach Miller talked about at practice yesterday. Finney Smith, as well as you get, they're all like to pump fake when they get the ball at the top of the key. That was one of the downfalls for UCLA, who was going for the pump fake, and they were able to get into the paint. The freshman closed, chopped his steps, and stayed in front of Finney Smith. Something to watch. Good point. Uh, there's something else to watch is Casey Hill. You know, consummate point guard. Shot clock got down under 10 seconds. He wanted the ball and to create something for himself or others. Didn't just settle. Got into the paint and drew the foul. 10 assists against UCLA in the last game. With the full board pressure, here comes Gucci Smith. He's a freshman. Pollard is a freshman. Seibert, Sanford, Robinson, Young defending. Seibert three. And the rebound all down by the 6'1 freshman Casey Hill. And again, except for transition, Dayton not able to get into the paint in their half court because of that defense of Florida. Devon Walker with the drive. The other way now comes V. Sanford. Collard in stride. Nice knock away inside. I think Young got it. Here come the Gators. It's a good time now to set something up. They don't have numbers. Oh, what a pass by Hill. The finish by the senior Patrick Young. And if you're Coach Miller, you're not happy with the offensive production for the Flyers. Too quick of shots. Sanford contorts. Rebound by Young. Well, I talked about the fact that you got to set something up. We're here on the screen and roll. It was actually Robinson that got set up. And Patrick Young gets the payoff. Wilbegin comes back in, takes the place of sophomore Devon Walker for the Gators. Right now the Flyers are playing into the hands of Florida. When they're breaking the press, which they're doing an actually good job of doing, they're attacking too quick. And I know it becomes a little bit easy, and you talked about it, Lynn. When those opportunities and shots are there, at times, that's when you've got to move the basketball. Dayton's got a third freshman on the floor. Davis, they go inside to Young for the pinpoint pass, and they get two. Well, earlier, I talked about the fact that Patrick Young had difficulty getting into the flow against UCLA. Here he is right here, set up nicely, point-blank range. Robinson allows him to get position, and when you give a guy that strong, that athletic, that kind of position, you might as well just stand and admire. That's Jalen Robinson for the Flyers. Has already picked up his second personal foul. How about the pass, though, there by Finney Smith looking over the high-low action. Florida on the 6-0 run. This already is Dayton's biggest deficit of the tournament. And immediately Kavanaugh back in the ball game. Oliver, three. Timely. Smart. Dribble drive action. Collapse the defense. Oliver with the long reach, knocking it away. Now they swarm. Finney Smith the triple. Rebound by Kavanaugh. Let's see if Dayton again can get into the paint. That's the strength of the Florida defense, not allowing ball handlers to turn the corner all that often. It's Davis on the wing. On top, Smith, Kavanaugh. With a travel. It's the first turnover for the Flyers. And, we, and you, we talked about moving the ball from side to side. Well, in this case, when you dribble drive and you see all the white jerseys in the paint, that's the best time to take a quick shot. They get back in for the Gators. Young again will rest. Prather's out there with the ball is Casey Hill. You get the screen. He'll roll, and Hill will fire him back. Prather, top shot. Oh. Nice finish there by Prather. He's got two. Davis racing the other way. Yet get swats it away. Two on one. Hill. Prather. They lure you in. That false sense of security. Davis thought he had a wide open layup. And that's exactly what the Gators want you to believe. Their defense is that good. And will you get the guy that everybody looks to? To lead them on both ends doesn't show up in the 
scorecard. Kyle Davis, three. His second shot, but his first hit, four-point game. The Gators have led by as many as seven with one tie so far in the opening minutes of the South Regional. This Dayton team is not going anywhere. They will always have three to four shooters on the floor at all times. The freshman point guard Hill has just picked up a foul as he was jousting with Kavanaugh at 11-13 to play in the first half. The best athlete on the floor, Casey Prather, making things happen right now with a little help from his friend, Casey Hill and Archie Miller. Got to work, guys. Little body, proud supporter of Dayton. Huge heart. Huge heart. Absolutely. We saw that wonderful feature in the pregame show about her and the relationship. She has a Devin Oliver who's go to the team MVP. He's got the ball right now. He's working on Prather. Under 11 to go in the first half. He goes outside for Davis to the double team Kavanaugh, and they are going to him quick once he reaches the ball. They don't Call think he's a in. great passer out of the double team. That's exactly why Billy Donovan is doubling down on, on Kavanaugh quickly. Plus, he's got a size advantage, whether it's you get or Prather, whoever's playing him down low. And with that skill of passing and also his ability to shoot over him, they want to make sure they get Dayton scrambling and they don't get anything directly from those passes. Is he Prather for the Florida Gators has picked up his second personal. See if they can get Oliver down low. Let him use his size advantage against Prather. Cyber to Oliver. The drive by Davis. Rebound lassoed inside by Prather. He's grabbed three rebounds for the Gators. Wilbekin and Frazier with the get screen and the roll down low and the mismatch now against the point guard, Price, with a whistle. And because there was that size mismatch, the guard had to reach in there a little bit. And he picks up his first foul. Foul the games anywhere with NCAA March Madness Live. Download the app for your Amazon Kindle, your iPhone, your iPad, Android device by visiting ncaa.com slash March Madness with Reggie Miller, Lenny Elmore, Rachel Nichols, Kevin Harlan, South Regional Final. And on that play, I was very uh, impressed by Yaget's ability to recognize the mismatch, took his time, and then exploited it. Missing from outside, rebound by Kavanaugh. Dayton doing an excellent job on the defensive boards, especially Kavanaugh. It's kicked out of bounds. We're being outshot 54 to 36 moments ago. The percentages from the floor, it's still just a four-point game with Dayton down. And I think it's because of controlling the boards here that's allowed them to stay within striking distance. And now it's 33% for the Dayton Flyers. There goes Frazier checking out. Young back in. Dorian Finney-Smith is in there as well. Walker defends. Here's Kavanaugh. He's already grabbed six rebounds for the Flyers in this game. Nine and a half to play in the half. Oliver. Kavanaugh. Good defense by Young staying on his feet. Oh, the ball hit the underneath portion of the backboard. Ricochets wildly, and Wilbekin is there to retrieve Dorian Finney-Smith. Shoving a foul. They got Kevin on Young, and the big men are down low, and they're grappling. Yeah, playing in the trenches as they should. And you would expect that two big, brawny bodies fighting for a small bit of real estate down low. And Kavanaugh definitely <laughs> pulled Patrick Young out of the way. Kavanaugh, Reg picks up his first. This is a smart decision here by Coach Miller to sit down Kavanaugh because him being the real only true post, low post threat for the Flyers. Wilbekin across the lane. Oliver with that long reach, brings down the ball, takes it the other way. Pierre, Price, Sanford, Scott. The third time the ball will have moved side to side for Dayton. It favors the Flyers. Devin Scott outside to V. Sanford. 
Price thinking about uncorking a three. Hesitates, and Hill is there with the deflection and the nice Gator defense. Well, each time you can exchange sides against the Florida defense, you create openings and gaps, which you want them, the Gators, to explore. It's Vinny Smith inside, looking for the loose ball, fouled on the play, and Price will pick up a foul that is number two. Get the most complete coverage of the team you love and the updates you need on the tournament's best moments with the Team Stream app from Bleacher Report. Go deeper with Team Stream on your iPad, iPhone, or Android device today. And I meant, Smith at the free throw line. And I meant, obviously, you want the Flyers to explore the gaps. And coming in to this game, we knew about the offense of Dayton. You really can't key on one guy. You know, if it's Cyber, he averages 12. Oliver averages 12. Pierre, 11. V. Sanford off the bench averages 10. So, you know, Coach Miller has a lot of weapons always on the floor. But Coach Donovan in Florida has done a great job of locating shooters, collapsing the paint, getting the ball out of Kavanaugh's hand, and slowing down that fast break pressure that the Flyers like to run with. William Finney Smith now from the free throw line in this tournament has gone 8 of 10. During the regular season, he was only a 62% free throw shooter. Smith is in. Well, they need a basket here bad. Down by six. They trail by as many as seven here in the first half. Oliver, French one inside. The double team Pierre. Oliver, a three. Why not? Well, that's how you shoot the threes inside out. Ball gets inside, defense collapses, the shooters can step right in to that long-range jumper. And Sister Maya loves it. Deflection the other way. Pierre to the rack. And a foul. Lynn, you talked about playing inside out, collapsing the defense. Oliver with his second three today. And Sister Maya. Loving it. And they like it back in the TU campus. Timeout. A little over 12 minutes into this uh, South Regional Final, Kevin Harlan, Reggie Miller, Lenny Elmore, you see the numbers so far. You said they needed a basket, and they got one. And they're not shooting the ball particularly well, but as we all know, the great equalizer at times can be the three. They're a plus six behind that. They're not going to go anywhere because of their shooting and, and their scoring ability, and they've got to be able, Dayton, to control the pace. Well, the control on the pace might be a little bit easier. Casey Hill with his second foul is on the bench. He's Florida's facilitator, and at a time when Florida's offense is stumbling a little bit, you know, Hill's got three of the five assists for them, had ten against UCLA, so they're going to have to find somebody to make plays. That pressure is going to fall on the back of Scotty Robertson. Well, Lenny since Florida took their largest lead of seven, They've gone 0 5 with a turnover. It's a one point game. Now a little bit of pressure here for Dayton. This is a team that plays 95% man to man defense. Frazier is in. Devon Walker running on that baseline. Young is in the middle. You get Wilbick and that is the Gator 5 on the floor with a shot clock down to 12. You get looking in, picked off by Smith. He took an elbow to the face, and a foul was called. I think it was an elbow. Let's take a look at it again. He took one of the chops, nonetheless. Inadvertent. Well, you get compounded the mistake of telegraphing that pass. I'm going to take a look right here. So go to your get. He's going to try to get the ball in to Patrick Young, but he telegraphed that all the way, and right here stops the fast break. Sanford, Smith, Pierre, Scott down low, and Oliver. That is the fire five. Been approaching seven to play in the first half. Next foul for either team puts them in the bonus, which should help, again, defenses and making it hard for the offense. Great hit great. by freshman Scoochie Smith. The great equalizer, Dayton, four of eight from downtown it's the flyers first lead wilbekin bouncing off bodies like a pinball like a ping pong and he is fouled as he was wheeling his way inside scott picks up his first well one of the things again 
you take a look at the idea of the defense of Florida. Look at all five guys pack line pretty much. Ball goes inside, kick back outside. They don't allow you to turn the corner, but if they allow the ball to go inside, Dayton very adept at passing the ball to the open man on the perimeter. The senior Wilbekin, the Southeastern Conference Player of the Year, the SEC Tournament MVP, and Reg, you're right, since starting 0-4, Dayton has gone 4 of 4 from beyond the arc. How about Scoochie Smith on that one when the ball was in that mid-post area, went to the open area in line of vision so he could be set and ready for that three-point opportunity. And you're right, that's the key, to be ready to shoot it. Six and a half. No one in double figures yet for either team. Smith makes the move on Wilbekin. Patience. A lot of it. Once again, defense trying to keep the ball from going inside and continually forcing Dayton around the perimeter. Sanford. Pierre had a tip on it. And finally hauled down by Devon Walker. He gets his second. Frazier. Nice move. He's got four. Smith. And they set. Good decision here. You hear Coach Miller on the sidelines directing the offense here. You probe a little bit if you're Smith. Nothing there. Pull the ball out. Pierre into Young. Outside Sanford. Across to Smith. The dance. The three. The rebound by Young. Again, good defense by Florida. Didn't allow to turn of the corner, although the drive on the baseline might have hurt him, but the challenge of the shot. Help and recover. Young mid-range. Off of Florida. 5-10 to go. Rebounding category, basically, in fact, they are exactly the same, 11 apiece on the glass. You know, what we're seeing offensively for Dayton, it's a lot like a heavyweight fight when an opponent is going against a, a more superior fighter. You want to take the shot clock all the way down, and just like in those prize fights, win the late rounds with a flurry. Well, that's what Dayton wants to do. They want to score late in the shot clock and make the Gators work for 30 seconds of that 35 seconds on the shot clock. New entrant in the game for the first time here in Memphis, Jacob Kurtz, who has walked on after being the team manager. He wears number 30, midcourt right there, chasing the ball. Cyber. Everybody's got a story, huh? Under five to go. And Dayton hasn't made a two-pointer in the last 10 minutes and 30 seconds. Everything from beyond the arc or the free throw line. Well, that's taking what the defense has given you. And Florida's going to have to extend that defense as Dayton remains hot. Pierre places it inside for Pollard. Tell you what, Pierre is such a gifted passer on this Flyers team. Wilbekin by Smith and to the hole. Rebound inside by the sixth man of the year in the SEC, Dorian Finney-Smith, and a foul is called inside. Well, he played good defense. You got to account for everybody on the floor. Who's guarding right here on the baseline? Too occupied, preoccupied, I should say, with the ball and not able to see man ball. One of the few times you'll see a solid defense like the Gators miscommunicate and lose a man. Dayton pick up a foul. Scoochie Smith will pick it up. Number one. At the line is Finney Smith, a Virginia Tech transfer. And boy, he's paid dividends for Florida coming here. SEC sixth man of the year. He gives them mobility, strength, offensive skill on that front line. And toughness along with you get as well at that wing position. Approaching four to play in the first half. They go down low. They were looking for Kevin Scott. And the ball ricochets out of bounds. Well, we're about to find out who will be in the NCAA Final Four.
And right after the game, get your official Final Four gear at NCAA.com slash shop. We've got a timeout. One point game. Lenny, what's on your mind? Well, I'll tell you, Dayton shooting four of nine from beyond the arc, as, as uh, Reggie's been saying, a great equalizer. When they're on defense, they're going to have to make a decision. Do they extend their defense and start challenging those long threes, but that opens them up for gaps in driving and posting up? Or do they stay back and play the law of averages because Dayton, on the whole, in the tournament, shooting 35%. I loved the confidence that Dayton has shown. They've played from behind in all these NCAA games in Ohio State, Syracuse, and even Stanford. This team knows how to play from behind. They just want to stay close to Florida and let their shooters and scorers take over. The shot clock now is down to five. Will begin. And he's got seven. He's been averaging just under 15 points a game in the tournament so far. Davis takes it by midcourt. Space, Kavanaugh. Young was there. Kavanaugh again continues to dig. And a timeout. The conference player of the year playing with a sore left knee. They were looking for power. The turnover and numbers for the Gators led by Robikin. Like that sweet utilization of left hand. Outstanding fundamentals. Five turnovers in this first half for Dayton. That's the last thing you want to do against not only a potent offense in Florida, but with their size, that's the last thing you want to do because if you're Dayton, take the possession and the shot clock down. No quick hitters. Gators are on a 9-2 run right now over the Flyers. Seibert, Pollard, you get defense. Young, the rebound. Seibert has to get going offensively. We talked about it at the open. He hadn't shot the ball particularly well coming into that Stanford game as Frazier knocks down his first three of the evening. He has a school record, 116 threes. It's the biggest lead for the SEC champion for the Gators. They come at you at waves. Wilbekin using his body as well as his left to shield the defender. And Frazier, no points with their defense. But man, are they explosive if you give them opening? How about changing the defense right now? A 1 3 1 half court pressure defense. And I think that's trying to help them extend their defense to get out the shooter. Finney Smith. Through the hands of Kavanaugh. Vacuumed in by Yaget. This is a scary time for Coach Miller and Dayton. You want to go into halftime in single digits. The Flyers are bleeding. Ford on a 14-2 run. Since Dayton led by two, 21-19, Frazier picks up his first for Florida. Well, once again, we talk about doing the dirty work. Watch him get to the spots where he needs to. Nobody blocks them out. And that ultimately you see everybody able to charge and get to that rim. Sanford at the line began his career dating as a starter, but then went to the bench earlier in this season. And part of the problem, as you saw in that for Dayton, is that they're in such scramble mode, they're not blocking anybody out. And that's part of the Gators' explosiveness. If they're not knocking down the shot, they're getting the offensive rebound and putting it back. Your Coach Miller, you've got to keep this deficit in single digits. Regroup at halftime. Assess offensively if you want to attack early in the shot clock. But you can't get down double digits against this Florida team. Eight from the line, four or six. Florida from the free throw stripe, seven of nine. And this is what a veteran team does. Hopefully they're going to be able to move the ball, try to get high percentage shots right now, add to this lead, rather than start feeling so good about themselves that they can just put up any shot after one or two passes. Young the screen, the switch on D. Now they're back in Sanford is on Wilbekin. He goes into a traffic-filled lane. Foul in the circle. Basket won't count. 
He'll be at the line and coming up on the AT&T at the half, Greg Clark, Kenny, and Charles with first half analysis and a preview of the West Regional Final featuring the Wisconsin Badgers and the Arizona Wildcats. Plus the Naismith Watch presented by AT&T. That's all coming up on the AT&T at the half. Oliver for the Flyers. Picks up his first personal. Wilbekin. Coach Miller, another thing you're going to have to address at halftime, how do we get our leading scorer, Jordan Seibert, going offensively? Hasn't scratched the goose egg 0 of 3. Remember, 18 points versus Stanford. 7 of 12 from the field. He had 8 points in the first half. Just hasn't found a way to get it going offensively tonight. Biggest skater lead. Corey Price. Under a minute to go. Gators back into man-to-man -man right now. Just showed zone a little bit. Plant a seed. Kavanaugh the screen. Chiseling his way inside Oliver. And making it's it frustrating. Wilbick in the other way. Frazier, the three. Picked up Finney Smith. Wilbick in. They'll hold it. Another offensive rebound. Once again, we talked about it earlier. Straight paths to the basket for the offensive rebounders. Dayton not putting a body on anyone. Smart senior leadership there by Wilbekin, recognizing that Florida had the last opportunity of this first half and not to rush that shot with 32 seconds left. His dad was his high school coach, Scotty Wilbekin. Boy, he's been through a lot, the senior. It's a triple. <laughs> Man. What a way to close the first half. Wilbekin has 14 for the Gators. I mean, this is from another area code right here. Scotty Wilbekin just walking down D. Sanford and just knocks down the long dagger. He knew he was going to take that shot 10 seconds before he did. Let's go to Rachel Nichols. Billy, that was quite a run there in the last six minutes offensively. What started clicking for you guys? Well, I think what we did is we went big there. We had some foul difficulty. We moved Dorian Finney-Smith to the small forward spot. Gave us a little bit more size. We are able to kind of switch some actions. They're a hard team to guard because they put on the floor so well. But that bigger lineup helped us some due to the fact that we had some perimeter foul trouble. Always fun when they can run off the floor like that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Back to you guys. The Gators on a 19-3 run. In the paint, easy points all in favor of the Gators. Yeah, we heard our own Charles Barkley talking about this Florida team just being too big and physical for Dayton. But again, I go back to Ohio State, Stanford, and Syracuse. Those teams had the size as well versus Dayton. They found a way. UD with Pierre right here. Kavanaugh down low, Price on top. Outside, Oliver the triple. Helps. That helps. It's a good start with the skip pass, but Florida right back at you with turn over right here. Devin Oliver the other way. Pierre. He's picked up by Frazier. Kari Price, Kevin on top. Cyber scoreless. Oliver. He's three of three from beyond the arc, and he takes it inside. Six quick points to start this second half for the Flyers. A lot of good ball movement there. Inside, out. And the Gators once again not really extending the defense. And I'm sure that's what Billy Donovan wants to talk about. Donovan takes the Gator timeout. Dayton has come out and look sharp. It's all about the ball movement. Cross-court pass right there to set up Oliver. And then Pierre comes right back with the same shot in the same corner. He said he was fine coming into this weekend's games and did fine on Thursday, but getting a little bit extra medical attention now. Something to look forward to. Hill checks in for Wilbekin. He's going to keep that ice on it and then I'm sure go to a hot pack to warm himself up before he comes back in. But 
I don't know if he's not cramping as well. Look like he's forcing fluids while he's over there on the bench as well. He may be cramping. Well, earlier, Patrick Young looked like he kind of overextended or hyperextended ankle, knee, left side. But he's still in the game and actually got caught up in the middle right there. Somebody lost his shoe. shoe. There's a the shoe at the free line. throw line is right. <laughs> and it was a member of the Flyers, Jordan and it was Seibert. Jordan Seibert. So he blew a tire. <laughs> he got stepped on there by Frazier, who, by the way, just picked up his second foul moments ago at the South Regional Final. Kari Price, Devin Oliver, Pierre. If Oliver would have turned around, he would have seen Kavanaugh underneath the basket for an easy dunk. Yeah, you got to take advantage of those advantage opportunities against this pressure. As soon as you catch the basketball, you got to turn around and look at the basket. Dyshawn Pierre, grinding with Prater. Snaps it outside, Oliver another three. He's made three of them, fanning for the first time from distance. Here comes Wilbick in the other way. You couldn't have asked for a better look if you're Dayton. And I'm puzzled that Florida's not getting out quicker to these three-point shooters. A lot of length now on Wilbekin with the defense of Devin Oliver. Kavanaugh is on Young. Young the screen. Pick and roll. Ooh, he hit the hard. Wood and a foul on the play as he was smashing his way to the rack. Pierre picks up his first for the Flyers. A well, simple screen and roll. Young <laughs> up in the air, and there's no doubt about it that, that was an offensive, I mean, a block. Yeah, Pierre slid over right into the, the path of Young. Good call there by the officials. So here's Patrick Young, who was built like a football player, but that makes sense. His dad played football, Bethune Cookman, and some tight end in the old USFL. His sister is a golfer at Florida State. Who do you think will come up big tonight? Tune in to watch Inside March Madness postgame. Presented by Buick to see the surprising performance of the night. A little more than two minutes into the second half. That's been a, a pretty successful play for Florida several times. Patrick Young and Wilbekin have gotten together for that screen and roll and given Young a couple of easy layups. Young in the backcourt with Prather. They have Young. Finney Smith is Price squeezing one inside to Kavanaugh. The collision in mid-flight with Young. Why, that was a, a terrific play started by Price. You'd think that he was... a. Uh, Wiley veteran, he kept the defender on his hip, on his hip until his teammate got in position and then dumped it off. Now Kevin off the free throw line. The only holdover from or the other holdover from the previous coach Gregory, a difference maker, didn't play last season. And in there and has made a difference this year as Hill checks out and they bring back in Michael Frazier for the Gators. Interesting. Uh, Archie Miller and this Flyer team, they have the ability in that half-court situation to put Kavanaugh in pick-and-pop situations. We saw UCLA do that with the, the Wear Twins to bring Patrick Young away from that paint area. Problem is Kavanaugh is not really looking at the basket. Further picked up by Pierre. They've got Seibert on Wilbekin. Price is shadowing Frazier. And Kavanaugh is on Young. The switch, now Kavanaugh's got to watch Prather. He slithers inside. With a foul. Going hard to the 10. With uh, almost three minutes gone here in the second half. Kavanaugh picks up his second for UD. No free passes to the basket on either end. You know, if you're going to take it to the hole, you better take it strong. Easy breather from Jackson, Tennessee. He was a finalist for the Tennessee High School Basketball Player of the Year. Leading score in the regular season with 14 points a game. And back in the contest for the Flyers, they bring the freshman Kyle Davis. And with the breather is Dijon Pierre. 
when you bring in V. Sanford, the transfer from Georgetown, you get smaller. You heard Coach Donovan talking to Rachel right after half that that's what the advantage is when Florida went big. Dayton's going to have to do a better job on the defensive boards here. One player in double figures so far, the 14 from Wilbekin. Dayton's so adaptable, man. They have played 11 guys thus far. Every one of them has played a contributing role in some way, shape, or form. It's a three from Oliver. And those opportunities you have to knock down when you're the underdog. You collapse the defense by getting the ball into Kavanaugh. You got to knock down those shots. Young with the dive, and he was surrounded by red defensive jerseys. Well, Kavanaugh's just not getting any help in pushing Patrick Young out from in front of the basket. That's point blank range. And as I've stated before, you let a guy that big, that strong, get it right in front of the basket, you might as well sit and admire it. He's getting the position early, isn't he? Here's a three from outside. Price the missed, and once again, it's Young. Well, they started off this second half by knocking down their first two threes. Have gone, has gone 0 for 3 in the last. Young's got five rebounds so far for the Gators. Just under 16 to play in the second half. Wilbekin, Frazier. Dayton getting three happy, six of 15 from downtown. Seibert fighting through screens. Prather again, slashing inside, knocked away by Oliver, who picks up the flyer foul. Oliver picks up number two. They start four seniors. They've been now to four consecutive Elite Eights, but they've lost the previous three. Will tonight be the magic? They say is responsible is their father, John Miller, a legendary high school coach back in Pennsylvania. He is, of course, here watching his son tonight. But here's the kicker. John Miller did not name his son that he's watching across the court, Archie. He named him Ryan when he was born. But apparently, Archie was a bit of an ordinary kid, a little bit stubborn. And the family nickname became Archie after Archie Bunker, guys. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> oh, Rachel. Well, I think Archie is going to have bragging rights come Thanksgiving dinner when Sean's around. He coached at Blackhawk High School, 35-year high school coaching career. Oh, one of the most successful coaches in Pennsylvania, Western Pennsylvania. Beaver Falls, but nationally, one of the best. His sons learned well. Here we go. Under 16 to play in the second half. See if Dayton can try to get something inside everything has been a three in this second half cyber shot clock is at 10. scoochie smith is in defended by frazier got the screen takes it to the rack finally something straight line drive to the basket that's a breakdown by the florida defense no question about it. excellent play by scoochie simply because a point guard when it's under 10 has to break down the defense create for himself and others but Florida's defense is too good to let him go you know unaccosted to the hoop inside for you get knocked away by Oliver and out of bounds and off of Florida this was Dayton's first two-point shot of the half they had taken five threes before this since halftime and I, I see what happened he split the defense they're supposed to be help help tried to show and come back and nobody covered well, that's a New York City school move, too. The little inside-out hot sauce move. <laughs> <laughs> I see you, Scoochie. Here's one of the top players out of high school basketball in New York. His senior year, the high school closed. He went to Connecticut to finish up, and he became the number one player out of Connecticut. And he chose the Flyers. Scoochie Smith. Still, Cyber. 0-3. Hasn't even taken a shot attempt in the second half. Out of bounds. Well, Rachel, since we're on the topic of nickname, let's talk about Scoochie. Well, guys, when he was a kid, he would scooch along the floor. So an uncle named him Scoochie. I want to know after all this, Archie, Scoochie, what should I start calling you guys? <laughs> Just don't call us meatheads. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's one of us that may be a meathead. The way you were eating last night at Rendezvous, Kev, mm -hmm. highly impressed, my friend. You really know how to throw down. Keep your thoughts to yourself. That's intercepted and picked up by Wilbekin. He's on a race. Oh, what a block there by oh, Oliver. Yeah. You're right. Young gets it. Wilbekin on top. 14 first-half points 
Nothing so far. Lenny four seven in the game. All right, it's plays like that from Oliver to let you know Dayton's not giving up. You know, that's pure hustle and determination right there to get there and slot that one away. Hill, Wilbekin drives on Oliver to the rack. The degree of difficulty. Wilbekin has made some of these shots in the paint. We saw a couple in that win over UCLA over Travis Ware. And right there was a nice, tough move there. Back-to-back -back turnovers here for Dayton. Off of Oliver and out of bounds. Wilbekin on the break comes down and you see Oliver trailing him and timing him all the way. But the next opportunity, he just continues his love affair mm. with that glass. And on the other side, meanwhile, for the Flyers, three consecutive turnovers for Dayton. Yeah, eight for the game. And that's the last thing you want to do against Florida. Stingy Gator defense. Hill at the point. Young, Wilbekin, Finney Smith. And Frazier, the Gator 5, approaching 13 to play in the second half. The winner to the final four. Smith out top. Pierre defending along with Sanford. Kavanaugh down low along with Power. That's the Flyers 5. Shot clock is at 5. Wilbekin, Frazier, a 3. I'm going to tell you why that's textbook. They played him for the shot. And he's primarily a three-point shooter, but the escape dribble allowed separation and space for Frazier the second. Florida has their biggest lead. Kavanaugh, 12 and a half to play in the half. Grinding his way into Young. Six for Kavanaugh. That's the kind of threat they need from Kavanaugh yes. inside right now. This is where you need easy buckets. The jumpers aren't falling. you got to have something dependable inside. But it's hard to get the ball to him with Patrick Young and the, the wing defenders of Florida making it very difficult for the ball for that entry pass. Hill the penetration. And Finney Smith caught was going up on the ladder and fouled. Fouled inside by Smith, who picks up his second for the Flyers. Talked about Frazier just being a three-point shooter. There's a little bit of hesitation, escape dribble. Nice rotation there for Frazier. Four or five from the field. I guess you could say Frazier smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Down goes Frazier for me, and now smoking Joe. Okay. Got to keep up. That's the last we'll, one we'll do. We'll see what, <laughs> what, what Twitterverse says about that one. Your cat will check in for Frazier. <laughs> Don't invite them. <laughs> Four to the number one overall seed coming in to tonight to this tournament. They've been number one in the polls since late February. The regular season champions of the SEC and the tournament champions in the Southeastern Conference. Five for Finney Smith. Under 12. Good switching right there. Communication is good for Florida. Switch on defense. Again, they go into Pollard. On the doorstep, couldn't get it to go. Sixth rebound for Young. And here comes Hill the other way with a screen and a slice. And a feed to you get who goes inside to Young, stakes his claim. He gets an early land and he usually converts. Yeah, he had to get up off the deck to get that basket. Patrick Young, five of six. He has just given the Gators their biggest lead tonight. This starting over again against UCLA with that love affair with the backboard. And here's Patrick Young. Starting to get in the rhythm and the flow of the offense. Dominating. A couple things we've talked about coming into this matchup. The two C's. Confidence and complacency. We saw that Dayton had the confidence to play with Florida. They got off to a, a quick start and they were within the game. We were all wondering, was Florida going to be complacent? This is their fourth straight appearance in an elite eight game with a chance to go to the final four. Well, they've answered the bell. They certainly have the other side of that idea of complacency would be hunger. Yeah. You know, are they content just to make it to the Elite Eight? Or do these seniors want to be able to go for the Final Four? 
and place their mark in history for a Florida. Sanford. You get Benny Smith and back to Robicon. You talked about the seniors for Florida. It was interesting listening to Billy Donovan as he was talking to us at practice. He said when they were a freshman, they were playing for Vernon Macklin and Chandler Parsons. And last year it was Bradley Bill. And now these, these seniors are understanding this obviously is their last chance and attempt to get to a Final Four. Young with the miss. Price with the board. Cybert. Wow, a big wall there to meet him. Kavanaugh finds himself open. The crash, no whistle. And the wild looking shot, which is picked up by again. Good no call. And Patrick Young obviously wanted to try to draw the offensive foul on Kavanaugh, who has a penchant for dipping his shoulder. So that, that wasn't enough to knock the big fella down. Somewhere Ponzo Martin is saying, yeah, you're right, that's yeah. a no call. <laughs> oh, that's that was a shame for Tennessee. <laughs> We're back in the three. And Retrieved by Devin Oliver from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Here's Price, Sanford, the aforementioned Oliver for three. Nice. He's been the most consistent scorer on the afternoon for the Dayton Flyers. He's yeah. got four triples. You like the arc on that, man. He puts a lot of air under that ball, it gives him a chance to go in. Devin Oliver is the only player on this Dayton team in double figures with 12. He's got the stroke. But they need more than him. His 12 have helped. Team in college basketball, the Florida Gators win elite defensively. Well, this is a team, again, that plays a version of that pack line. They make sure that the ball handler doesn't turn the corner and penetrate. And when they finally do get an entry pass inside, there's plenty of help to thwart the inside player, forcing them back outside. And they invite guys to go baseline because there they have an opportunity to double team and finally anticipation all put all those things together this is a team that's holding teams around 56 for 56 points a game in the tournament and under 40 percent from the field and Linda, we've been hearing that throughout this tournament with teams such as virginia arizona michigan state pack line defense and a lot of people say well what is it you got to load to the ball with all hands and vision on the basketball, obviously, as well as to your man, you got to stop dribble penetration, which we saw in that clip, and swarm in the basketball. And once the ball goes up and gets on the rim, then you got to get a body-to-body a -body person to come up with the rebound. That's what pack line defense is all about. Yeah, but it's also helping recover. The guys are stepping out, helping off of their man and recovering quickly. And the most basic thing is you start below the three-point line. You don't overextend your defense. You know, if you want to take a low percentage shot, by all means. Robinson now in, gets the feet inside, and the pass came from Dijon Pierre. Robinson has his first two. There's a big discrepancy at the line. 17 to 21 for the Gators, 6 of 8 for Dayton, and the free throw percentage is close, but the rebounding numbers are different. 25 18 in favor of Florida there for a bigger Gator team. And Pierre already with five assists on the afternoon these are the three you get goes for it out of bounds flyers will get the ball coverage of the ncaa division one women's basketball championship regional semifinals continues tomorrow on espn and espn2 and for more information on game times and listings go to ncaa.com turnover is basically the same Three and double figures for the Gators, 16 for Wilbekin, 12 for Young, who's been terrific. He's also been collecting rebounds. He's got six right there, and 10 for Frazier. And second chance points, easy points for the Gators there, Lenny, 10-1 on top of eight. Yeah, they've been able to pass the boards and, and be more efficient in putting it back since they're almost even as far as offensive rebounds are concerned. Well, we know what one of the scouting reports was for Billy Donovan take away one of the primary scorers, the main scorer for Dayton, Jordan Seiberger. We talked about no points in the first half, 0 from 3. Hasn't even attempted one here in the second half. And he's being guarded by Scotty Wilbekin, who always draws Ooh. the other team's toughest guard. Nice spin by Pierre. That was a pretty move right there. He's got nine points. He's assisted on five baskets. We're approaching eight to play. Knocked away the long reach right there of Oliver. Retrieved by Prather. Frazier. You get. 
Inside, Seibert with the steal. Ill-advised pass. You don't see Florida with too many unforced errors. But that wasn't a, that wasn't a good look at all. This could be a good time for Jordan Seibert to kind of knock down a three here for his confidence. He's not taking many shots at all. None in the second half. Right. Shot clock at 10. Trailers on Oliver. Wilbekin watching the perimeter. Dyshawn Pierre, the bump into you get with the you get foul for the Gators. Number two. Pierre here with a nice pirouette move here. Spin and finish around the basket. We have seven and a half to play. The game number's right there. Second half from Memphis. Kevin Harlan along with Reggie Miller and Lenny Elmore. Well, is, if they're shooting 54%. Dayton is here in the second half. Is there enough time, though, to get back in against this great defense? The way they're able to shoot threes, yes. But they're going to have to be very efficient offensively and almost go perfect at the defensive line as Patrick Young with the nice block shot there. He's got four, Lenny. Four blocks for Young in the game. Well, Patrick Young is really establishing himself in this particular game. Against UCLA, Billy Donovan quoted he, that he wasn't in the flow particularly. Today, he seems not only to be in the flow, but he's playing swimmingly. <laughs> Gators out there with Prather. Finney Smith on the wing for Frazier. Wilbekin and Young. That's the Gator five on the floor. Three of fire. Wilbekin. Rebound lassoed by Oliver. He gets it off to Smith. Oliver's got four rebounds. He's got Pierre. He's got Robinson. And he's got Cyber. That's the flyer five and 640 Reds to play. And not to diminish the outstanding game Scotty Wilbekin is having, but sometimes I just scratch my head about shots like that. You know, when you're up 12, you got a chance to really build a lead, a lead and all of a sudden you just take a 30-footer. Pierre gets it to drop. He averages 11. It's a 6-0 run for Dayton. Pierre has got 11. And you're always, when you take shots like that and on the other end they score, it's like you leave the door open. You crack it open. Just waiting for Dayton to kick it in. Finney Smith dropping it inside. Young. Robinson defends. Nice rebound. Aggressive rebound. Finney Smith an open three for Robinson. Isn't that usually what happens? Second shot opportunities with all red jerseys in the paint trying to rebound. Now that was a much better three. <laughs> I like that one. He's got three of them tonight. Golden opportunity lost there by Dayton. Up here, triple. I'm not quite sure he called bank, but it counts in Vegas. He's got two threes and 14 for the game. And earlier you guys were discussing, can Dayton come back with the time? Absolutely, with this kind of offense and against this defense, they've got to be able to go inside out because they shoot the three so well. They're going to get open looks. Robinson pushes Young out, and that has been a key on his last two misses. A great save right there by the sixth man of the year in the SEC, Torian Finney-Smith. And you can tell all of the Dayton fans are up booing thinking that that was a travel but the officials call was that he was bobbling the ball never really had possession Vinnie Smith has five offensive rebounds because if you have possession you go down to the floor that's a travel under five to go shot clock at seven Wilbekin concocts picked up by Prather again offensive rebounding being the Achilles here heel of this much smaller flyer team well, they've been allowing Florida to get clear paths to the offensive glass. Bump of the foul going on Devin Oliver, the senior, number three. Well, you know, we talked about it earlier. Dorian Finney-Smith gets to the glass, a clear path. And again, right there, they said he didn't have possession, but that's, he dribbles it. That's a travel. And right here, just a terrific job inside. I pray they're getting good position and forcing the defense to try to do something with him. Young will sit. You get this back in for the Gators. See if they can try to get Kavanaugh going down low with Patrick Young going to the bench. You get trying to guard him a little bit undersized down low. Four and a half to go. 
He'd be really undersized if he cut that mohawk down a little bit. <laughs> right now, they look about the same size with it. Wilbekin, Howard came out there. Now he maneuvers into Cyber. Been working down that shot clock. Oh, nice. The edge, a great Play. crossover outside. Finney Smith. Rebound pulled down nicely that time by Tyshawn Pierre. The other way he goes. Dancing for two. What a drive. To start this half, it was Oliver offensively. The last four minutes, it's been all Pierre offensively for Dayton. He's got the last nine flyer points. Frazier three. Rebound retrieved by Yaget. Drives, knocked away by Kavanaugh, picked up by Frazier. They can't seem to come up with a defensive rebound. And I like what Wilbekin has just done. Told his guys to settle down. Come on, fellas. We got the lead. Make him come to us instead of taking these crazy shots. The offensive rebounding story. Dayton is shooting themselves in the foot by not being able to come up with a defensive rebound. Well, they've been scrambling so much, they can't get position. Wilbekin. Another Frazier. offensive rebound. Smith. Kavanaugh. Here comes Dayton. I'm Pierre. I'm going one-on-one -on -one right here. Pierre has scored the last nine. He finds Pollard. You get. I think they're calling a foul on Kavanaugh. Robinson. Or Pierre, Pierre will pick up the Dayton foul in an eight-point game with two and a half to go. Dayton is trying to make a late comeback here. Pierre with the lay-in and Big Cav with the block shot. Flyers trying to make a run here. And back on campus in Dayton with the Elite Eight. South Regional Final, four to now by eight. They've led by as many as 17. And Lenny Ford has missed eight consecutive shots. They've missed 13 of their last 14 from the floor. Which is very surprising for a veteran team. You know, you should know how to put teams away. You're not going to hit a grand slam with one shot. And Florida kind of rushing, trying to make the play that they think is going to put Dayton away. And really what they've been able to do is give Dayton an opportunity to try to come back on them with the ill-advised shots. You get at the line for the Gators. And if you're Coach Miller, you love the hustle and heart of your team, but missed opportunities to secure defensive rebounding to give yourself offensive opportunities. Remember now, Florida, they're not a great free throw shooting team, only 66% on the season. Two timeouts apiece. Pierre defended by Yaget. Outside for Smith. Frazier's on him. Great opportunity for Oliver Seiberg. Big threes. A three from Oliver. Rebounded inside, taken by Frazier. And the way Florida's going to win this game, defense and rebounding right now with this kind of lead. Because now they can come on the other end. They can kind of take some air out of the ball, utilize that full 35-second clock, and cut down on the number of possessions for Dayton. This is all Scotty Wilbekin time. We saw on Thursday when UCLA was making that run, Wilbekin offensively came alive. He's known for the clutch. He's got six to fire. He's defended on the play by Seidert. Ah! Rebound by Oliver. He's got five. And even with that miss, they took the clock down far enough again minimizing the possessions but Dayton their ability to shoot the three well they got to hurry up they, yeah. they don't have time to run offense now they got they have to go after quick looks Pierre Prevers on back to the schoolyard you got to go Scoochie Smith nine on the clock thrown away 105 to go the way they came back into this game is to go back to the schoolyard but right there scoochie smith throwing the ball to no one and uh they're really obviously a little discombobulated archie miller recognizes that gets some fresh 
players in, particularly on the defensive end. But the play clock, again, down to nine. Now, remember, this Dayton team scores 72 points on the season. They only have 50 tonight. Give a lot of credit to the, that Florida defense. Yep, they did in. the same thing to UCLA. UCLA averaged 82 points on the season. They get into you. The, Florida's done it to everyone they've played in this tournament, averaging, uh, allowing just 56 points per game in the tournament. Dayton is shooting 40% from the floor. The Gators are shooting 37% from the field. And there was a quick foul. It goes on Seibert, the first on him. Well, Reds, this goes to your point about Florida not being that good of a free throw shooting team. I think right now Archie Miller is just going to extend the game. You got to make a decision. You either extend it or you don't. Right. Well, reminder, track all of your fitness goals and devices in one place with Upwave. Track it. Sync up now at upwave.com slash track it. Wilbekin at the line. Coming into tonight, he had only taken four free throws in the tournament. And tonight, four of four. Florida has lost the last three consecutive Elite Eights. This group on the floor, they start four seniors, as we've talked about all night long for Coach Billy Donovan. This group has been witness to those. And so they know and understand and certainly can relate my opinion the best coaching job billy donovan has had and that's saying a lot for a guy that's won back-to-back -back national titles but on those teams he had three top 10 nba picks and corey brewer and al horford and joe Kim noah there's not a first rounder or even maybe a second rounder on this team this team's imprint is all billy donovan the discussion is based on a possible the illegal substitution for Florida before the free throw. Let's see if we can find out. We well, like we said we've got a veteran crew with multiple Final Fours officiated among them of Stewart, Chow's, and Driscoll. Watch this again. It was Prather off the bench. Well, he goes. Looks like he goes to the scores table, and the official is ruling him in. There was a question about that. Everything is fine, we were told, and so. Prather will go and stay on the bench. When you look at the guys that are on the floor right now for Florida, knowing that they're going to be fouled, Scotty Wilberkin on the season, a 72% free throw shooter. He's the second best behind uh, Michael Frazier. Everybody else under 70%. Rangers on the floor, Finney Smith, Young, you get Wilbekin, the Gator 5, the drive by Sanford. Oh, right on the doorstep, it almost crept in. But that's been kind of the story inside with a quick Dayton foul. Yeah, if you're Wilbekin, you keep the ball in your hands as well, being the best free throw shooter on the floor currently for the Gators. You know, this is something I think that coaches need to teach their teams. In situations like this, Dayton has the ball. They're going to the basket. you got to go to the basket with reckless abandon because the other team is not going to foul you. Lenny in two-point shooting tonight. Only 10 of 28 for Dayton. They've had some mid-range shots that have just not fallen tonight. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's part of the basketball game. But they've hung in there shooting a three, getting some timely defense. Well, this is the first of the Elite Eight. And the winner here will go to North Texas next week for the final four on TBS. They'll take on the winner of UConn, Michigan State. And boy, did Izzo's group just get by last night in what was a fabulous night for college basketball. Sanford's gone. Seibert and Kavanaugh, Price is in. They've got Pierre, and they've got Oliver. Dayton the other way. Down by 11. The try by Pierre. A wild layup and you get controls it. That's yeah, what I'm, another point blank layup too at the and that's front of the rim. That's what I was talking about, Red. You've got to go straight to the rim. You don't have to change yeah. shot. They are not going to foul you. The Staten team has gotten here the hardest of ways. They beat 
Ohio State from the Big Ten. They beat Syracuse from the ACC. They took care of Stanford from the Pac-12. They've not been rated in the top 25. And what has been a masterful coaching performance by Archie Miller coming out of the Atlantic 10, 10 and 6, and overall coming into tonight, 26 and 10. And let's give a lot of credit to the Atlantic 10 as well, getting six teams mm -hmm. into this tournament as well. And obviously, Dayton, you see the mass substitutions here for Coach Miller's team. Kavanaugh, so much a part of it. Oliver, certainly. Seibert, Seibert a junior. Oliver, a senior. Kavanaugh, a fifth-year senior. And when you look at that Dayton roster, sure, they're going to lose Oliver, Kavanaugh, and Sanford. But the core is there to build on. And having made the Elite Eight, you know, things are looking up for the Dayton Flyers. Yeah, they have some top recruits coming in. Daryl Davis out of uh, Detroit Douglas High School. Steve McElvain from New Haven High School in Indiana. Pierre right there. They just, they just got to find a heart because Devin Oliver is the heart of the, the Flyers. They got to replace him. I know we want to win. We need to win. But we can't press, fellas. All right, it's not going to happen on the first play. We got to go through the whole game. We got to go through everything. We got to go through the highs and lows. They stick together no matter what, man. We're a team. Wade plays it off the board and lays it in. He invented that one. We got to amp everything up. Everything's got to come up. Our physicality up. Our rebounding up. Our awareness. Here we go. Billy Donovan said in losing the previous three consecutive Elite Eights, there is never an easy exit. The only place he's going right now is the Final Four. Fourth time's a charm. The Florida Gators are going to the Final Four. They really got it done after the defensive end. My opinion, this is maybe along with Michigan State, the two teams that are the most complete at both ends of the floor, offensively and defensively. Both obviously well coached. But Billy Donovan has his crew locked in. And we're going to let the opportunity slip by the fourth time to the Elite Eight to move on. Well, guess what? They're headed to North Texas. The Florida Gators with a win on campus and in person in Memphis. A standing ovation for the improbable run by the Dayton Flyers. The lower seeded team remaining. And tears of joy for a guy who has witnessed a lot of heartache, Patrick Young. He was the SEC Defensive Player of the Year. Working as hard, they said, this year as he's ever worked before. The witness to three consecutive Elite Eight losses. And tonight, they capture a berth to the Final Four. Their 30th consecutive win is a win over Dayton. Now, who will they play? We'll find out tomorrow on CBS between the Huskies and the Spartans.